Hello my dear friends. In today's session we are going to discuss about tide and ebb. So my dear friends, tide and ebb is somewhat we call as the regular rise and fall in the surface level of the earth's oceans, seas and bays which are caused by some attractive force. And that attractive force is the gravitational force. The gravitational attraction of the moon and to a lesser extent of the sun. So my dear friends, the maximum high tides occur when the moon and sun are directly aligned with earth. So that their gravitational pull on earth's water is along the same line and it is reinforced. And the lowest high tides occur when the moon and sun are at right angles to each other so that their gravitational pull on earth's water originates from two different directions and it is mitigated means tides vary greatly by region and they are influenced by seafloor topography storms and water currents so this is basically called tide and ebb. Now let us see the specific definition of tide and ebb. Yes my dear friends, what is meant by tide and ebb? It is the periodic variation in the surface level of the oceans and of bays. Even the gulfs, inlets and estuaries. So, these are caused by the gravitational attraction of the moon and the sun. And this periodic variation, which is caused by the gravitational attraction of the moon and sun, is called tide. Whereas a period of decline or diminution is known as, sorry, diminution is called as ebb. So, this is the difference between tide and ebb. Right, my dear friends? So, my dear friends, the concept of the tide formation is basically based on the gravitational forces. As you must be familiar with the term gravitational force. Now, our solar system is based by strong gravitational force and rotation of all the planets, including Earth, on which we live. Now, it also depends upon these gravitational forces and the rotational force of the rotation of the planets. Now for aligned rotation of Earth, gravitational forces of Sun and Moon play most important roles in the formation of the occurring of tide and ebb. Right? So the, these are the gravitational forces of Sun and Moon which include the effects on the surface of the Earth. Now Moon is much closer to Earth as compared to the Sun. So gravitational impact of the Moon is twice as strong as the impact of the Sun. And this fact well explains that why tides are specifically linked with the conditions of lunar days only. Now my dear friends, when moon rotates around the planet Earth with its gravitational impact, it pulls the water from the surface of the Earth. As a result, tide formation takes place. Now, these tidal forces are extremely strong. But thanks to the oppositely acting centrifugal force of the Earth, which balances these strong tidal forces. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for us to live. So, my friends, these tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon on the earth's surface. This is the very simple thing to be understood. This is the concept of the tide formation. Now let us see the actual meaning of how these formation of tides occur. Yes, what causes the formation of tide? Now my friends, the major reason of the tides is the gravitational pull produced on the surface of Earth by the Moon and the Sun. So as the Earth rotates, it is tugged, by, tugged at by the Moon and the Sun. 
because the moon is much closer as i said before the pull of the moon is approximately twice as strong as the pull of the sun which explains why the tides are so closely linked with the lunar day now here while most of the people associate tides specifically with the ocean the entire planet is subject to tidal forces as is the atmosphere and in fact all celestial bodies are influenced by tidal forces now here the large volume of water on the earth has made the actions of the tides particularly notable and very interesting like the discussions of the movements of the tides it can be found in the most ancient writings of the world and suggesting that people have always been integrated by the one seemingly mysterious rise and fall of water along the shoreline so it is this which explains that as the moon moves around the earth it creates a bulge of water on the earth's surface which follows its movement creating a tide and a corresponding bulge appears on the opposite side of the earth that is the centrifugal forces which are generated by the earth's rotation so basically the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon as well as the rotation of all the planets play a very important role and causes the formation of tide so my dear friends this is the picture which depicts the formation of tide here you can see very clearly so my friends tides vary radically around the world depending on location and geographical features as a general rule tides are less noticeable in the open ocean and they are more pronounced along the shoreline with the places like the caribbean and the mediterranean mediterranean uh, having generally smaller tidal ranges while the canadian bay of fundy you might have heard about it has an extremely large tidal range which can be as much as 50 feet that is about 15 meters that is what we call as high tide so my friends tides also vary in frequency and in some locations tides are diurnal and semi diurnal so we will see that what does it actually mean yes my dear friends here you can see a beautiful picture of some thing called as the graph right so this is the diurnal tide this is the semi diurnal tide which is also called called as high water here and this is the semi diurnal tide which is the mixed type of tide now here tides are diurnal meaning that there is one high tide where the water is high and one low tide every day right in other areas tides are semi diurnal means semi means with two high and two low points here you can see this is one this is two so once there will be condition when the water will be high then it will be low then it will be high again right and then low and then high so this is called as semi diurnal means with two high and two low tides now by observing tidal patterns in an area and keeping track of the movements of the earth moon and sun it is possible to create tide charts so this is one such chart which is depicting the meaning of diurnal tide and semi diurnal right so predictions can be made which can list the time and even the height of various tides so these are called as tide charts which are extremely important for the navigation especially in areas with extreme tidal ranges so this is the tide tide chart which should be studied for such areas where the formation of tides are very much common so it can be useful to the people which are living in that area or in the surrounding area so that was all about the formation of tides now we will see that what is actually the difference between 
high tide and low tide my friends high tide is when the moon pulls the water up further onto the beach for example we are taking a beach because water most probably you can see in an ocean open ocean a sea or a beach so beach is the best example which i can explain now here high tide is when moon pulls the water up further onto the beach now here moon is not an object which will pull by itself but it is about the force which comes over from the moon by moon right so this force will pull the water up onto the beach creating less sand space here we are discussing about beach and that is why we are saying that it will create less sand uh, sand space in terms of beach now again in terms of beach only i'll explain the low tide too now here the difference between the low tide from the high tide is when the moon pulls the sea out further creating more sand space so where there is more sand space and the water will be pulled towards the sea not towards the sand so there will be more sand space so this is what we call as low tide so never think that low tide can never be harmful it can be harmful as well just like the high tide right because low tide will never make you reach to towards the land because it is creating more sand space right so high tide and low tides are caused by the positions of the sun and the moon which are relative to your position on the earth surface like i can present it in a very clear picture yes this is a clear picture which will show that this is the high tide and this is the low tide right so it happens basically it happens on the lunar days so sub lunar is the not totally the lunar day but yes it is the day on which high tide occurs so it is called as the sub lunar day and most probably low tide occurs on the antipodal day means antipodal means means it doesn't occurs on lunar days right so this is what we call it as the high tide and low tide now basically the masses of the sun and the moon gravitationally attract the water on earth surface and it causes the water to bulge away from the center of the earth so although the moon is much smaller than the sun it has a greater pull on the water because it is so much closer to the earth and since both the moon and sun are pulling on earth's water highest tides occur and the sun and the moon are both directly overhead so they are pulling together on the water in any area right and even the lowest tides they occur around 6 hours earlier or later when the moon and the sun are on the horizon and they are both pulling the water sideways away from us that is from the earth so confusingly a very high tide will also occur around midnight when the sun and moon are aligned but on the opposite side of the earth from us that is the new moon phase so this is what we call as sublunar and this is caused by the combination of the two effects first is the sun or moon which is pulling the water surface simultaneously into the elliptical shape of the earth and secondly the sun and moon they are pulling on the earth pulling it away from the surface of the water on the far side of the earth means the earth and moon are actually rotating around a common point which is not at the center of the earth so these high and low tides also occur when the sun and moon are on directly opposite sides of the earth also called as the full moon phase so it occurs on the new moon phase and the full moon phase this is what we call it as antipodal right so as their gravitational pulls still accentuate each other they create the formation of tides now when the earth sun and moon they are not lined up there will be less dramatic differences between high and low tides right so what we can say in short the moon pulls the water one way and the sun pulls another 
and the total height of the water surface is the result of the combination of these pulls and is usually highest beneath the moon right so this is what we call it as the high tide and low tide i hope the difference between high tide and low tide is clear to you now let us move on to our other topic yes different types of tides now here my dear friends when the sun and moon are aligned there are exceptionally strong gravitational forces causing very high and very low tides which are called as spring tides though they have nothing to do with the season and when the sun and moon are not aligned the gravitational forces they cancel each other out and the tides are not as dramatically high and low so these are called as neap tides so there are different types of tides like spring tide neap tide mixed tide bay tide and the lunar tide too because these are the tides which occur on the lunar day so it is termed as lunar tide right so we will peek into each type of tide in some or some of the details right so let us start with the spring tide yes my friends now here you can see a beautiful picture of the earth and here are the tides we already saw this picture of tides of the occurrence of low tide and high tide now here spring tide and neap tide they occur simultaneously now here i would like to tell you about the spring tide first here you can see the first quarter of the moon and as the rotation and the gravitational pull occur so from the first quarter quarter till full moon spring tide occurs means when the moon is full or new the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun are combined so at these times the high tides are very high and the low tides are very low so this is known as the spring high tide now spring tides are especially strong tides remember that they have they do not have anything to do with the spring season right so they occur when the earth the sun and the moon are in a line means they are aligned and the gravitational forces of the moon and the sun both contribute to the tides so spring tide occur during the full moon and the new moon here you can see that means it will occur on the full moon and the new moon now rest we are discussing about neap tides now neap tides are those which occur on the first quarter and the third quarter of the moon phase means during the moon's quarter phases the sun and the moon they are at the right angles causing the bulges to cancel each other now the result is a smaller difference between high and low tides and that is why it is termed as neap tide because there is very less or the smaller difference between high tide and low tide so neap tides are especially the weak tides what do we call it as we also call it as weak tides because the tides which happen they are not at the extreme level they occur when the gravitational forces of the moon and the sun are perpendicular to one another with respect to the earth so neap tides are those which occur during quarter moons and spring tides occur during the full moon and the new moon simple and here you can see one more beautiful picture and a more clear picture of the spring tide and the neap tide right so for this reason only most of the parts of the world they publish tide charts in a form of small table which outlines the expected times of the high tide and the low tide through this quarter phases of the moon and this new moon and the full moon and usually a tide chart includes the estimated height of each tide along with the times of sunrise and sunset along with moonrise and moonset so in neap tides the sun and the moon are at right angles while in the spring tide the sun and moon they are not at the right angles but they are perpendicular sorry they are not at the right angles but it occurs during the full moon and the new moon right so people who want to get a rough idea of what to expect from the tides can check and see whether uh, where the where in the lunar cycle they are to determine if there will be a neap or a spring tide right so it can be determined when high and low tides will occur and it can be the information can be gathered and organizations can be provide uh, 
will, uh, will also provide and they provide weather and tide data too right so this is what do we call as what we call it as spring tide and neap tide in the same way there are other tides too like mixed tides now the mixed tides itself the term means that it is a mixture of two different tides that is dual economies like um, in a typical mixed type of tide both the tides occur like spring and neap both and in the bay tides they basically occur in the large volume of water when there is large volume of water on earth and it it, it makes the actions of the earth very noticeable so there is a mysterious rise and fall of uh, uh, water along the shoreline so this is what do we call it as a bay tide and the lunar tri tides are those which are created because the earth and moon are attracted to each other just like magnets are attracted to each other so the moon tries to pull at anything on the earth to bring it closer right and so what happens that there is a constant formation of tide and the ocean is constantly moving from high tide to low tide and then sorry and then back to high tide so there is about 12 hours and 25 minutes of difference between the two high tides so this is what do we call it as the lunar tides because the nautical clocks they keep the track of the rate on average between high lunar tides which come 12 hours and 24 minutes or 25 minutes approximately or about half of the lunar day also called as sublunar day right so this is all about the high tide low tide and what we discussed about the different types of tide right now we will discuss about something more interesting about tides and it is the tidal flows now here tidal flows they basically occur in types of water like here we are discussing about fresh water inflows so fresh water inflows fluctuate in more or less random fashion in response to surface runoff from tributary catch catchments so the construction of major dams in upstream catchment areas they reduce both the volume of fresh water runoff and the fresh water flushing of estuaries and in times of drought fresh water inflows may be consistently principally they would happen on the constant discharge of sewage effluent and other waste waters too so these are the tidal flows which i'm going to explain you which i'm going to tell you in brief right so it includes five phases that is the ebb and the flood tides slack water phase lag tidal excursion and the tidal prism now here i have presented a beautiful picture of the tidal flows which will explain which will make you clear in a more better way now here ebb and flood tides they are the vertical rise and fall of the tide which produces horizontal flows in the form of tidal currents so here is the first one which is showing the fresh water inflows so it will flow from here this is the start position this is the end of the flood and this is the end of the ebb so the tide starts from here and ebb is ending over here and here are the ocean tides which occur again in the ocean right because the fresh water is flowing from here and it will and many such tributaries or the catchments will join to a large stream of water body and it will create an ocean tide so depending on the tidal range entrance characteristics and the depth of the estuary tidal currents can have quite fast velocities now the incoming or rising tide is traditionally referred to as the flood tide what do we call it as the flood tide which starts at the start position and because it floods the channel it is called flood tide and the outgoing tide is referred to as the ebb tide so here we call it as the end of ebb so this is the strength of the ebb and the flood tide velocities which vary 
diurnally uh, diurnally and over spring neap cycles in exactly the same way as tide water levels vary right so this is about the tide flood uh, ebb and flood tides right now discussing about the slack water the period of quiet water when the tide reverses from the flood or flood to ebb or vice versa is referred to as slack water means high water slack is the name given to the tide change from flood to ebb this one right so this difference is called as the slack water so this is the duration of the slack water which is quite variable from one estuary to another and it can last from 20 minutes to almost 1 hour right now coming to the phase lag now phase lag is something which is depending upon the type of estuary the peak tidal discharge often occurs at different times to local high and low waters at the same location right so this is called as phase lag time means there is some time period between the occurrence of the high and low waters but it is not harmful and discussing about the tidal excursion now here you can see the tidal excursion means the total distance which is traveled by a water particle from low water slack to high water slack and vice versa is called as tidal excursion so here you can see the net tidal excursion which occurs in the fresh water right so this is called as the tidal excursion now typical tidal excursions in the tidal rivers of some place occur and it vary from tide to tide so this represents the maximum distance traveled by a water particle during the rising or falling limb of the tide so tidal excursion is not to be confused with the distance traveled by the tide wave itself which propagates from the ocean to the end of the estuary each tide cycle but a distance of up to 143 kilometers in the case of hawkesbury river now discussing about the ebb excursion now what is it it is the distance traveled by the ebb so it varies from ebb to ebb right so the these are the fresh water inflows which impose a net seaward movement on water particles over a tight cycle and in these circumstances the ebb tide excursion is the greater than the flood tide excursion right as you can see here this is greater than the tidal excursion so this is the end of the second tide and lastly it is the water parcel which leaves an estuary and it forms the largest water body means the total volume of the water which is moving past a fixed cross section of an estuary during each flood or ebb tide is referred to as tidal prism where the water parcels water particle or water water it parcels away and leaves an estuary so the larger the tidal range within the estuary the greater dimension of the estuary the larger the tidal prism is so whilst the tidal prism of many estuaries is large it does not mean that these estuaries are well flushed the movement of water contained in the tidal prism is largely oscillatory and the net seaward flushing action over the tide cycle results from many such processes which finally leaves the what leaves an estuary and forms the largest water body and then it will occur as the high tide right so this was all about the tidal flows now let us share some of the very biggest news yes tides at halls harbor on nova scotia's bay of fundy now my dear friends each day 100 billion tons of sea water flows in and out of the bay of fundy during one tide cycle more than the combined flow of the world's freshwater rivers so this is something which was the greatest news in the 20th century so visitors can see two extraordinary high and low tides every 24 hours at the bay of fundy so this is the place where usually tides and tide and ebbs occur a lot or basically tides occur a lot and second 
is the Mumbai's highest tide in 100 years, which occurred on 24th of July 2009. Yes, just have a look on, the, on this picture, which shows the Mumbai's, Mumbai's highest tide, which occurred near the gateway of India. This is the second picture, a more clear picture, which shows the Mumbai's highest tide in 100 years. The sea waves rode the tarmac near the gateway of India, Marine Drive, Juhu and Worli, among other places. It happened on Friday, 24th of July 2009, as Mumbai was lashed by tidal waves, which was 5.5 meters high. This is what the picture is depicting near the gateway of India, and it was 5.5 meters high so this was one of the very biggest news about the tides which occurred in india so my dear friends i hope you enjoyed this session learning about the tide and ebb and and getting acknowledged by such calamities which occur these are not one of the natural calamities, but definitely it is one of them, right? So I hope you enjoyed this session. We will meet in the next session with a new topic. Till then, have a nice day.